Hello, my friends. I'm Tom Sinclair, that Vid Blaster guy. Welcome to today's show, tonight's show, to morning's show, whenever, whenever and wherever you're watching it. It is really a lot of fun to be with you today. This uh, Vid Blaster is so much fun. It just, you know, it's 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 a big boy toy. It's it's really great. Um, I got an interesting show for you today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the 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 new whatever you call it. Got to remember, I'm not a tech guy. I'm just a dad that likes to do soccer and ended up falling into this broadcasting stuff um, quite by accident. But uh, something called WebRTC that allows you to basically do a video chat directly with uh, a friend without going through an intermediary like Skype. So we'll be testing that out in a little bit. That'll be a lot of fun. We're going to talk, and we'll have a little uh, trivia contest to hopefully select somebody from our live audience that can kick and chat with me on the, on the, the video chat. We'll also be talking a little bit about our November giveaway contest because it's October and you got to get your videos ready. We'll be giving away Vid Blaster every week in November. Also have some great questions that folks have asked this week, so we'll be putting those in our question and answer session. And then I thought we would probably start out with, uh, with a little bit of news. Um, it's, it's really kind of exciting. Oh, and, and a thank you to Chuck Goosh for, Gooch for the new, uh, newer lower thirds. We're going to try those out this week. Uh, it's a lot of fun to have things like that just show up in your email box. Thanks, Chuck. Um, this week, or maybe it was the tail end of last week, Streaming Media Magazine who also does conferences all over the, the country, I think all over the world, has recognized uh, Mike Versteeg and VidBlaster as one of the top 100 companies in video for 2013, in online video. And that is, that is really cool. That's, to my knowledge, the first time that VidBlaster had been recognized outside of the VidBlaster community for you know, the great product that is and, and the, the groundbreaking... Um, features that it's brought forth. And so that's cool. And hat tip to Mike Versteeg for that. Uh, well done. And, uh, and keep, the, keep the good work up. Um, oh, I forgot to mention. Um, the, this, this show, That Vid Blaster Guy, is based on the premise that, that one guy with one PC, not a Mac, sorry, but one PC, I guess it could be a Mac running one of those PC uh, Windows emulating softwares, but one guy with one PC can do a pretty darn good broadcast. You don't need a room full of PCs. You don't need thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of software and, and hardware and cameras and, and mixers and microphones and all that stuff. It really can be done on a budget with really good results. And that's what we're here to tell you about today. Now, full disclosure, I am an authorized VidBlaster reseller. And so I want you to buy VidBlaster, and I want you to buy it from me. Because if you buy it from me, you get free support for life, either your life or my life, whichever one comes first. And if you own VidBlaster already and you bought it from somebody else, we can sell you a support patch package. Or if you want to upgrade to version 3 or upgrade your addition to Pro or Studio or Broadcast, we can help you with that and put you in the lifetime support package uh, as part of the package, no additional charge. So there's the little commercial. We got that out of the way. We can get on to the fun stuff. Uh, so hat tip to Mike Versteeg for his recognition by Streaming Media Magazine as one of the top 100 companies in online video for 2013. That's really neat. What also is really neat, and this just happened last night here in the U.S., and I guess that would have been you know, early morning, in Europe is that, uh, well, let me tell you the story. Uh, this is in the VidBlaster forum. And so if you're curious about the forum, you probably want to go there. It's forum.vidblaster.com. And that's where the VidBlaster community kind of hangs out and, and talks about stuff, problems, and, and new ideas, and feature requests, and bugs, and and sometimes we argue and sometimes we pat each other on the back. But uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's a really cool place. It, it's fun to be, have been associated with it. And the, the forum has a section where you can have general discussions. And it also has a sections where you, section where you can make a feature request. 
Well, one of that, I'm not sure it was in the feature request section, but a member of the forum suggested that somehow VidBlaster uh, use this new protocol, the WebRTC, as a way to bringing into VidBlaster directly a, a video, an audio feed from a remote guest, somebody in a different town, different state, different country, different um, continent, whatever and that certain browsers like Chrome and Firefox and maybe some others are now having this function built into them. And, you know, it was one of those things where I don't think anybody really understood what he was suggesting, and it just kind of went thud. And, and I looked into WebRTC. Now, again, I'm not a tech guy, so I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm just looking. I just, <laughs> I'm just looking at the pictures. <laughs> See, if the pictures make sense, I'll read the text. But the pictures made a lot of sense. It, it, looked like, uh, it looked like Skype with one person here and one person here, and they're talking to each other, but they're not using Skype, and they're, apparently they're just going directly from browser to browser. And I'm thinking, you know, this is really cool. And then the more I read, the more I realized that this, this WebRTC protocol or set of rules or whatever it is can be integrated into applications. For example, if you have a company that does customer service or needs to do customer service and you want to set up a, in addition to, you know, some of the companies have a text chat now where you can, you can text them. Some of them have a call button where you can call and be connected and do audio. And it's becoming more popular to do a, a video call. Well, you can integrate into your company's website the ability to set up a video call with a, your customer, and they can click a button, and boom, they're video calling you. So that's, that's going to be really cool, and I, I suspect we'll see that more and more in, in, in major corporations that are doing customer support where video would be really, really helpful. So if that can happen, why can't it happen in VidBlaster? Instead of having to run Skype as, as separate software, um, or, you know, something else like, like Uvu or, you know, maybe a Google Hangout or something along those lines and, and import that in as a single, uh, either as a single window or as my friend Amnon Nissan does when he runs his Sunday morning tech show. It's, it's called Tech Show for, for Geriatrics, I think. No, it's really Computers 2K now. But he's, he's doing screen capture and using Skype with that kind of multi-user Skype, multi, uh, multi, whatever, whatever it's called, where you got the, the multiple people on the screen at one time. And he's individually screen capturing each one of those folks and bringing them into uh, VidBlaster, uh, one screen cap at a time. Chat room says, group video, thank you. Oh, that's Amnon, welcome Amnon. So the group video in, in Skype is what he's using, and he's doing three screen captures, one for each of his other three, three co-hosts. And if he loses a co-host, then the, the Skype screen reconfigures him, itself, and he has to reconfigure his screen captures. It's a real pain. I, I did it uh, in a soccer talk show probably about three or four years ago, and, you know, it was great when all, the, all my guests showed up at the same time, but if somebody didn't show... You know, I had to redo the screen cap, or if they called in late, it, it screwed everything up. So I, I'm thinking that uh, if we can get this functionality to come into VidBlaster as a, a camera source, um, then, you know, at least step one is that you can integrate one guest in as a camera and be able to use them as a camera without having to do a screen capture and without having to do, uh, sorry, I got distracted by the chat room. I'm reading something from Amnon. I said, I just forgot what it's called. Did you ask me? <laughs> That's because he's so old. Sorry about that. If you're watching us later on YouTube, you, you got to tune in live and, and catch with the chat. It's, it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's old guys talking tech. What can I say? So if this WebRTC can be integrated into to VidBlaster, it eliminates Skype, and it probably lowers the CPU usage. And at some point, you know, if you can do it with one, maybe you can do it with three, maybe you can do it with 28, I don't know. 
uh, I don't know enough about it to know the limits. Now we're going to test that, um, or, or at least test the basic function of that a little later here in the show. We're going to do a trivia contest. The winner of the trivia contest, if they want want to, can call in, and we will um, will 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 do it. Now it will be a la Skype. That is, we'll be doing a screen capture, and and I haven't I haven't tested this, so. I'm not sure how it's going to work. One of the things that I'm real curious about is the audio. How is the audio going to come in? Because I haven't tested it. Um, so we'll see. Um, anyway, that's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll, we'll do that. But before we do that, I want to tell you about our um, well, a couple of changes to today's feed, the live feed. If you're watching us live, I'd like you to check us on your iPhone because we made some pretty major changes. I think they're major changes to the iOS stream. Decast, who is our, our streaming provider, we're actually streaming two separate feeds, two separate streams today. One is our main stream to Decast, which is 864 by 480 at 30 frames a second, 1500 bit rate for video, 128 bit rate for audio. Um, I think it's 128. Yep, yep. So, you know, pretty, pretty stout um, standard definition stream of, you know, 1,628 um, bits per second. The, um, the, the second stream is going to DeCast's iOS service. And so it, it gets to DeCast, and I suspect it gets re-encoded, and then it gets piped out again. And it's at a resolution of 320 by 180, so it's really small. Good frame rate. Uh, frame rate is uh, 30 frames a second, but it's a, a really small video. And, and, and thanks to my friend Prem in, uh, in Australia for suggesting that, that frame rate, and also Richard um, in Sweden. Um, and I've lost my train of thought when I was giving you guys thanks. Boy, that's, I shouldn't do that. I, I won't do that again. The, um, we, we tried it last week, and the, there was some green artifacting in the video. It, it acted out. I'm not sure that I've still got it, that, that I've yet got it perfect. I tried it on my wife's iPhone, and it was great. It was crystal clear. It was spot on. I think there was a little bit of uh, audio, uh, a video delay, which I'll have to, to watch and see. Um, and I tried it on my Android, and it and it worked differently. I've got a, a Samsung Galaxy 3, and I was able to watch the video kind of on a web page. And when I went and pressed the little button to make it go full screen, it just went black. And then it, then uh, I think it was the, the the phone that came up and said, "Sorry, I, you know this video can't be displayed." And it was displayed when I was watching it in the small, but when it went full screen, it, it couldn't figure out how to do it. So if you're watching on your, your Android device, you know, you can drag the screen out to be full screen, but you can't click the little full screen button, and I'm, I'm going to track that down to see if that'll work. Um, the, um, the iOS feed is is anywhere from 20 to 50 seconds delayed because of this re-encoding that I think is happening out there somewhere. But, you know, heck, it's, it's, it's a small little stream for me to send, you know, 320 by 180 uh, video. I think, I think I'm sending it at uh, 350 BPS, so that's, that, you know, that's, that's pretty good speed. I could probably knock that down um, if I needed to. And it, if you're watching on your iPhone, you know, if I'm, if I'm burning up all your data, um, let me know, and I'd love to test it and see what's kind of the minimal bit rate that we can do and still have a decent stream. The, um, you know, this, this show right now is, is really kind of an easy show for a phone to receive and display because there's not a lot of movement. Um, it's not like a sporting event where there are people moving back and forth where colors are changing right and left. You know, I'd say what maybe 80% of this is is static, not moving, and then there's just my jaw that's that's moving a, a mile a minute. But um, I think I think this is this is going to work. We'll see. I, I wasn't very impressed last week. 
I, I went through some of their forums and read, uh, got some good notes. For example, it said, you know, don't use use a non, uh, what did it say, use a non-baseline format. So we switched over, <clears throat> excuse me, to the main format. And I think that cleared up a lot of the problems right there. And DeCast, by their own admission, is still working the bugs out of this. So we're, we're going to cut them some slack and go ahead and try it a little bit longer and see how it does and, uh, and see, you know, this, this, it, whether it's the wave of the future or not, it's, it's nice to be able to watch this on your phone if you'd like to watch it live. And I know sometimes I'll, I'll tune in to, to some folks' shows and I, I was like, oh, this is a good show, but now it's time to go shopping. I, I hate to shop because I really don't shop. I just sit outside and watch videos, but I can watch videos on my phone. So this is, this is good stuff. Um, we're getting some good feedback on that here in the chat, which I'll have to read in a little bit. The uh, Coming up in November, we've got the VidBlaster giveaway contest. We're giving away a home edition of VidBlaster every week in the month. It's really going to be fun. And here are the rules. Here are the rules for the VidBlaster contest. Rule number one, uh, you got to make a video. That's, that's, that's the way it's going to be. This is a video show. It's, you got to make a video. And you have to use the equivalent of the home edition to do the video. Ah. The home edition has, um, you remember Vid, VidBlaster is a modular program, and the, the higher editions have more modules, and the lower editions have less, less modules. The home edition has seven modules, and there are a few modules that aren't, aren't even available in the home edition, so you'll have to check the, the chart, vidblaster.com, as to what's available and what's not. But you're limited to seven modules. So if you already own the pro version, or, or even if you already own the studio or broadcast version, and you want to enter the contest, that's fine. But you got to limit yourself to just seven, hold it, there we go, seven modules. And then I would like you to, the video challenge is to create a show. Could be a talk show, could be a sports show, could be a, um, I have my good buddy Travis up in, in Brooklyn that uh, wants to do a show about, now this is his idea so you can't steal it, he wants to do a show about making shoes. Well, why not? That's a great idea. You'll, you'll probably get a huge audience from all over the place because you may not have, you know, that many people on your street that want to watch it, but yeah, we're not limited by that kind of geography. So make a show about anything you want, just a kind of a kind of a pilot. Let's think of it like a pilot show or a teaser. Um, doesn't have to be a full show, but but give us an idea of what that show would look like. If you've always wanted to do a show, here's your chance to throw one out there, get some good feedback. And what we'll do is I will look at all the shows that have been submitted and pick a winner. And let's say week one, you don't win. And you think, ah, oh, I could have done better. And you, you know, and I'll show you the, I'll show you the winner's show. And so you may learn something from that show. And if you want to redo your show and resubmit it for the next week, no problem. We can do that. You can submit as many times as you want, as many different show ideas as you would like to. It can be a, just a lot of fun. So all you budding filmmakers out there, and, and you, uh, you, bye, Andrew, nice to have you. Um, and all you folks that, that want to, have always thought, you know, I'd love to have my own show, but, well, here's your chance. Now, if you don't have VidBlaster and you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching this live, you can download VidBlaster from the forum, forum.vidblaster.com, go to the download section, um, and download it. It'll, it'll show up as a trial edition because you don't have a, a key because you don't own it yet. And so it ends up putting a little logo up here uh, and then another little logo right here to indicate it's the trial version. But other than that, it's fully functional. It's the equivalent of the studio version, which is the next to next to top level. So you'll have to limit yourself to just those seven modules. If you, uh, if, if you need some help figuring it out, Go ahead and shoot me an email, Tom at that vidblasterguy.com, and I, I'll give you, a, a, you know, kind of a, a helping hand on that one, and and get, help get you started off in the right way. Oh, hold it, Chuck made me up a. There we go, lower third with the email in it, Tom at that vidblasterguy.com. 
and uh, can give you a few tips. Basically, it's, it's a modular system. You use the modules you want. You don't use the modules you don't want. And for those of you that are watching some of the older videos, well, we'll get this into the, into the Q&A section. So anyway, that's the Vid Blaster contest coming up in November. Uh, and you can enter by sending, oh, yeah, to finish the rest of the rules, send me an email, tom at thatvidblasterguy.com, and in that email, send me a link to your video that you have uploaded to your YouTube channel and made it what they call unlisted, not public. A public video, anybody can watch. An unlisted video, anybody can watch if they have the URL. So send me the URL so that I can watch it and I can be the only one to watch it, other than your grandmother, of course. So that's the Vid Blaster contest. We're going to work on that some more, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Before we get to the WebRTC, I've got a few... Uh, announcements of folks that are using VidBlaster, and you may want to go take a look at what they're doing. Uh, my good friend, uh, Jean LeMay, I hope I pronounced that correctly, my French is atrocious, uh, is up in Quebec and does a show on the last Monday of every month. So I'll remind you again next week, because I, I think that's the week before the last Monday. And he's got a great show that 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 talks about or actually, they play French music, and they, uh, they interview some of Quebec's most outstanding artists. So if you're looking for something that's a little out of the ordinary, that's going to be um, Jean's show. And let me, let me do a quick live text here and get the URL up. It is fm... 1017.com. So let's see if we can put that up there. Yeah, there we go. www.fm1017.com. And that's uh, Jean's show on the last Monday of every month. You can get more information about it at that website. And uh, John is uh, using VidBlaster. Somebody else who is also using VidBlaster is uh, Justin Hopp. And Justin has an outfit called Dirt Track Central. And Dirt Track Central is, and we'll put the URL in here. Let's see if I get that spelled right. Yep, there we go. Dirt Track Central, let's put the obligatory dot. They broadcast dirt track racing from the, the, the heartland of, of the United States. And coming up this weekend, Friday and Saturday, I think it's Friday, Saturday, although it may be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You'll have to check the website for sure. He's got a, a, a huge race. So it's going to be racing all day, late into the night. It's pay-per-view. I think it's uh, $25 if you, $20 if you sign up by today and $30 if you sign up after today. And it's a whole weekend of dirt track racing using VidBlaster. Uh, so we're going from French music in Canada to dirt track racing in the middle of the U.S. And he's going it's, to, it's really going to be cool. He's going to be doing, of course, you know, with dirt track racing, if you've ever watched dirt track racing, you know they, <laughs> they have wrecks. So what's better for wrecks than Fid Blaster's instant replay? So you can get to, you get to watch that Fid Blaster. Oops, sorry. We're going to have to go back to Jean's here in just a second because we got his wrong. Thank you, Jean. Just picked it up in the chat. Um, DirtTrackCentral.com. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And they'll have instant replay of all the wrecks. They're going to pour it in the audio from the track announcer because if, if you've never been to a race, boy, the track announcers are just really outstanding. So that's going to be a lot of fun this weekend, DirtTrackCentral.com. And if you're thinking, boy, I'd like to do a pay-per-view of an event, you know, wonder what it looks like, it might be worth 30 bucks just to experiment with his. Um, and if you want to see what his website looks like and how he promotes himself, then by all means, let, let's, let's do that. Uh, let's also go back and fix what we did here. Sorry on that one. Let's see. It was 10, nope, FM 1017.ca. That was Jean's website. My, my bad. Um, okay. And then 
Oh, and this is gonna be fun. Coming up on this show, not this week, and I'm not sure exactly when yet, we're still working out the, the details, but um, have you ever been in a situation where you're broadcasting and you've got, uh, for some reason, <clears throat> you've got a delay? Maybe you've got a delay that's in your camera, maybe it's in your capture card, somehow you've got a, a video delay and you know you, that you can't broadcast with a video delay. You've got to put things in sync. And so you go out and you get a Behringer Shark for oh, 100 bucks US, something like that. And you put it in the system. So now your audio and your video go out together. But if you monitor your own audio, it's going to be delayed. That'll drive you nuts. How do you fix that? Well, there are probably <laughs> lots of ways to fix it. But, but two of our best here on this show, Peter and Martin, have put their heads together and have come up with a tremendous solution. And they are going to do a demo video of how to fix that and showing exactly how, how they fix that problem. So that's going to be coming up. Not sure exactly when, but I wanted to, to get it out there so that you could be watching for it. Because if you're suffering from that, that problem, this is going to be a fix. It's going to be cool. So not only are you fixing that, that sync delay that is, is giving problems to your viewers, you're going to fix that audio delay that's giving you, well, probably headaches, if nothing else. So that's something to look forward to coming down the pike, coming down the pike. Um, the trivia contest, you can, and uh, i tell you what, send your answers now to the trivia contest to tom at thatvidblasterguy.com. So get your emails already set up. Now, this is live, folks. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't, don't send it. <laughs> it's already happened. Tom at thatvidblasterguy.com. Here is the question. Uh, at two times in VidBlaster's history, has the developer of VidBlaster asked the VidBlaster community for input on what he should do next with VidBlaster. As a result of those two times, there has been two significant, I think significant, improvements or new features to VidBlaster. The answer, the, the answer to my question will be, or my question is, what are those two features or improvements to VidBlaster that sprang from the VidBlaster community and now are part of VidBlaster, and I would might add, a major part? Shoot your answer to me, Tom, at thatvidblasterguy.com right now, and if you win the contest, you get the ability to come live online with me right now and chat. <laughs> that, that'll kill off the audience right there. Uh, but it's, it's, it's Tom at that vidblasterguy.com. Um, pop an email to me now, and let me get an email app open here so we can start with that. And um, while we're waiting for folks to, uh, to kind of tune in, what I want to do, let's see, where is the login? Um, we've had some great questions recently that I wanted to address here on the show because I think, number one, I think number one, you'll find them interesting. Um, but number two, I think you will, um, you, you, might be, you might be wondering the same same time. Um, so, doggone it. I just realized <laughs> I can't get to that email client from here, but I'll fix that in just a second. Um, I had an inquiry from, from Bob. Bob works at the uh, Oregon Museum of Science and Industry, and Bob wants to set up a new exhibit. Actually, it's part of a traveling exhibit that the museum is going to produce. Um, that will include uh, chroma key so that people can experience, you know, having the, the background. I mean, this is, this is my background in real life, um, shadows and all, and, and that's my, uh, my chroma key setup. But 
Bob wants people to experience that in real life so that they can see what's going on with it, and he would like to use VidBlaster for it. But he said they have a, a unique situation there at the museum, is that they have programmable circuit breakers that turn off the power to the exhibits at the end of the day, and then turn on the power to the exhibits at the beginning of the following day. So whatever the exhibits are, they have to be able to reconfigure themselves or, or boot themselves and set themselves up with no human interaction. Uh-huh. His question was, if we do this with VidBlaster and use the effect module and the chroma key function in the effect module, will the settings in that chroma key be saved when the system boots itself back up? Will they automatically be there? Will they be retained? And what he's talking about is the, the advanced settings tab. If you were here in a pre-show and you know that we were sort of tweaking the, the, the chroma key here for this shot, um, we, we used the advanced settings. And so we were able to adjust lots of things in the chroma key that, that generally you don't have access to. So he wanted to be able to use this advanced tab um, and have all the, the menus, all the settings in the menus stay the same. So um, the answer, Bob, is yes, you can do that. The Blaster will retain those settings if, if the, the PC turns itself off and then turns itself back on. Assuming that you've got the ability to automate that startup process, um, VidBlaster will have those settings waiting for you. Now, there may be a problem in a different area that affects VidBlaster, and, and that is, and again, in pre-show, we were playing with that a little bit, is, is the camera settings. The camera that you're using will have to be able to retain those same settings as well, because if the white balance changes or goes back to a default setting, something like that, or is set on automatic, and so it, it, it is reading the, the wrong thing to get its, its setting, um, then it's, it's not going to work. You're going to have to have the, the camera that will be able to configure itself as well. But great question, and thank you for asking that question. Be happy to chat with you about that more if you like. Oh, and by asking that question, you get a, a $10 uh, reduction on your future purchase of VidBlaster. So questions worth 10 bucks. Had another question from um, my good buddy Travis at uh, Bird River Studios in, in New York. And Travis asks, uh, I've made a graphic, a lower third graphic, but it appears in the middle of the screen. What am I doing wrong? Well, Travis, you're not doing anything wrong. You're just, you're just not doing it right. <laughs> Your graphic probably looks great. What we want to do is we want to move that graphic down here to a lower third position um, where it belongs. And the way to do that is to make the canvas for your graphic the same size, the same resolution as the resolution you're using in VidBlaster. That way, you're filling up the screen with the overlay. For example, this is an overlay right here. But the file itself includes all of this, 864 by 480. And the graphic part is just put down here in the lower left corner or the lower third area. So copy your graphic, open up a new page in your, your uh, editing software, make the page size, whatever your resolution size is in VidBlaster, 864 by 480, 640 by 360, 640 by 480, whatever it may be, and then put that, that logo down here, put that lower third down here where it belongs, save it. Remember, you've got to save it with the alpha channel, uh, the, the blank background. And that will get you a lower third that's not in the middle of the screen. And uh, $10 to you on your next purchase of anything, of anything VidBlaster. And, and, and those purchases can include capture cards too, so if you're interested in that. And one more question before we get into our, to our contest results. Um, this is from Eugene, who is setting up a garage studio. How cool. Apparently, the family has given you permission to use the garage as a studio. Number one, you want to make sure it's heated and cooled so that it stays dry 
and the temperature ranges don't get too hot or too cold for your equipment. But he says, I've, I've downloaded the trial version, the trial edition, but there's no audio in it. Help. Well, that sounds like a simple question. And in some ways, people would say, ah, what a silly question. Of course there's audio. Well, there is. But what Eugene is saying is he's probably looked at version 1 or version 2, and there was a module there in the default profile the very first time you opened up VidBlaster that said audio. And if you right-clicked it, you could select an audio device. And that was important because when you recorded, you needed to be able to record that audio device. When you streamed from the streamer, it picked up whatever you selected as the audio device. And you could actually adjust the volume there. Well, in version 3, the audio device has been eliminated. It's gone. Well, the reason it's gone is because the audio functions have been integrated into the modules that needed them. So no need for a separate module. Now this is a bonus to folks that use the Home Edition because one of their seven modules, actually it's a bonus to everybody, because one of your modules was the audio module. You had to have it. Now it's integrated into other modules, so you've got one extra module. That's cool. And that could be the difference between you know, staying where you are and going up to the next edition. So that's, that's a real bonus. And if you're thinking about upgrading to version 3 from version 2, yeah, that might be a good reason to do it. In the, um, in the player module, you can right-click the player module and set, set an audio device. Same thing in the recorder module, same thing in the streamer module. Those are the modules that use the audio. So you can select whatever your audio source is going to be. And in fact, you can select different sources. If you want to uh, record a different audio track than the, than the track you stream for some reason, you can do that. If you want to stream a different audio track than, than what you're playing, uh, than what you're recording, you can do that. I guess that's the same thing twice but backwards. Anyway, you've got more flexibility by having that audio um, to be selected in the modules themselves. So. That was a great question, and Eugene, when you get ready to purchase FidBlaster, remember, remind me that uh, that you get a $10 discount on that for sure. Okay, so let's get down to it here. Um, and oh, and if you've if you've got a question, uh, shoot your question to me. If we use it on the show, we'll give you a $10 credit towards any purchase. If you um, if you need you know, obviously ongoing technical support, that's more than just a question. We, we, we might ask you if it gets complicated to buy a tech support package. Uh, it's, you know, a one issue package is $20 or a year package is $100. Um, or if, if you upgrade with us or buy anything with us, uh, you get the tech support for free, lifetime tech support. So that's, that's the whole question and answer segment for this episode. Um, let's see. We need to see if anybody has entered our contest. And if they have, um, what they are going to be, what, whether they got the right answer or not. Send your answers to Tom at that vidblasterguide.com. And I am going to, uh, I hate to do this in the middle of a live show. But I can't get that email at this address. Um, so, golly, this is so unprofessional. I'll be right back. How about a little theme music?
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Totally unprofessional. Sorry about that. But that's, uh, that's just the way it goes with live. You just, uh, and, and it's the old one man thing. Now, I do have a laptop. I brought my laptop in here with me. Um, let's see if I can show you the laptop right over here. This does not violate my one man, one PC rule um, because we're just using this laptop for email. We're not doing anything else. And uh, that's the, so let's take a look and let's see if anybody has entered our contest today. Uh, no, no. Uh, and we have three entries, so I'm going to give you just another minute um, as we talk about it. Um, got an entry from, from Tommy, from Bob, and from Martin. Um, Mike Verstig said in the VidBlaster forum, um, oh golly, I guess it's probably been two years ago, uh, what would you like me to work on next? And I thought, you know, what a great thing that the developer of the software would just sort of throw it out there and say, okay guys, what are you interested in? And there were all sorts of replies to that. And I, I do have a confession to make at this point. <laughs> Is that I was... And, and still, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a sports broadcasting guy. I just I love the sports broadcasting. And we had instant replay, which was good, but it, it, was, it wasn't done yet. It was just uh, it was basically just a recap of whatever the last 30 seconds were. Um, and so it, uh, and, and you couldn't control the speed. And once the last 30 seconds had gone by, it was gone. I mean, it was great for live, but it, it didn't, it wasn't as good. It wasn't perfect. And so I, I emailed everybody I could think of and said, go on the forum and vote for instant replay, uh, slow motion. And, uh, and that, was, uh, that was the first answer, was uh, instant replay, slow motion. And basically what Mike did was he, he gauged the feedback, you know, how many people are interested in that. And, and so I, I confess that I did have a, uh, I did try to influence the outcome of that, uh, of that uh, election. Um, and then the second time he did it, and, well, actually in the first time, there were a lot of folks that said, uh, we want um, VidBlaster to be able to do HD without killing our PCs. You've got to find a way to optimize VidBlaster for HD. And so the second time he did it, it was VidBlaster's uh, HD optimization. And that was, those are the two answers. So the, the person that got that right is, is Martin K. And Martin, um, if you would like to join our broadcast, I would be delighted to pull you in. And uh, I guess I have to use this computer to send you the link to... to whatever you call it, the WebRTC app. That. Let's see, where is that thing? You know, you really ought to have these things figured out in advance. One second, bear with me here. Oops, can't type on that keyboard, can I? <laughs> All right, hang in there. There it is. Copy. So, Martin, if you are game, I am sending you a link to the app that is running video. And if you will join me by clicking that link, that should bring you into the call. And this is what the app looks like. And I'm screen capturing it. And we'll just have to see 
He says, I don't have anything rigged up here in order to join in. Okay, got it. Well, we're going to go to the second person on the list and see, because they got one answer right. Actually, two people got one answer right, but we'll go to the first one that put it in. And that is Tommy. Tommy, I'm going to send you the link by email and see if you would like to join us here. If, if Tommy says he can't, okay, we're going to go to Bob and send him the link. And after that, we're going to throw it out just to whoever wants to watch. Um, and Bob, if you want to, we'd love to have you join us. Just click the link and you'll be brought right in. I'm not sure about the audio. That's the only thing that I'm not sure about yet. And then if Bob doesn't do it, I'm going to pop the link out here and take the first caller. But it's, it's live. It's untested. So while we wait for, for Bob to hook up with us, we'll see. And I hesitate to, to share the, the, the app because I kind of stumbled on it and I don't know that it's necessarily for public consumption. So I don't want to abuse them, especially if it's something that they've just got in beta and, and they're tweaking and doing some testing too. And I'm not sure how, <laughs> how um, secure it might be. Bob says he's trying. Okay, good. That's good. And it, it, again, it should be, um, it's got to be in Chrome or Firefox, from what I understand, as the browser. Bob says trying, and then he says a few seconds later, initializing. And it's still initializing. And when I tested it the other day, basically it, it took all of, of my, all of my video and put it right down here in a little box and then allowed the rest of the screen for the video from, from the caller. And I think what that means is that the folks that configured this app basically just determined that that's how they were gonna have both people's video show up. The person that was calling in got the big screen on the person that was receiving. Uh, Bob's switching over from Firefox to Chrome to give it a try on Chrome. And, and we'll see. The, uh, the other demos that I've seen of this technology have been where uh, people were side by side. Uh, one person had a big side, the other person was on a little side. And I guess that probably depended on whether you were the caller or the person that, that received the call. Um, but I think it has lots of promise for folks that are doing um, internet TV talk shows and are either bringing in a co-host or are bringing in a guest. I mean, think how great it would be to a guest. I mean, they don't even have to have Skype. They, all they need is uh, a browser uh, and, and probably a fairly decent internet connection, and then you just send them a link. And whenever you're ready to have them, have them on, uh, they click the link, and if this becomes integrated into VidBlaster, you don't even have to do a screen capture. You got them there on a camera. Um, you're waiting for somebody to join, huh? Okay, so am I, Bob, so let's, let me refresh that browser and see if that makes any difference. Um, you know what, Bob? There is a slight chance that I sent you the wrong URL. Let's just double check it here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I um, let's see. Boy. Folks, I apologize for how unpolished this is. Um... Bob, I'm going to send you something to append to the end of that um, because what I did was I just sent you the link 
that I used. And it gave me a custom URL here on my end. Let's see. So if you will append this text that I'm sending you directly to the end of that URL that I sent you. Um, and I guess after the dot com, you're going to want to put in a slash. So it would be dot com slash and then question mark R equals and that information that I sent to you. Um, while Bob's working on that, uh, we, are, we are trying a new chat. There he is. How about this? Bob, have we got audio for you? Okay. Look at here. That's a pretty darn good picture, too. Now, as we're doing this, I'm watching my CPU, and it's bumped into the 80s. So we'll see. But he looks like he's coming in high def. Um, I can hear you beautifully. Yes. Yes, I'm not sure why you're hearing me twice, but I tell you what, if you would adjust your camera um, so that, yeah, because you've got me kind of on the, what, Bob, what can you see? Do you just see me sitting at the desk waving? Okay, okay, all right, all right. I'm going to reconfigure the screen capture here on just Bob and take me out of the mix. Um, oh, I think that's fine. Hang on one second, let's see. Capture four three. How much fun is this? Yeah, I mean, if we were doing a show guest, I would probably have you come up and say, hold on, for some reason I'm not doing the screen capture correctly. If you were a show guest and we were using this app, I would have you move a little bit more to your right. Well, then maybe you're left. Now, yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, now you're out of the picture. Your other right. There we go. There we go. And that's going to be interesting. I don't know what the resolution is on that, but it looks pretty darn good at this end. Um, and I may be the only person that can hear you Okay. Ah. Okay, so for folks at home, that's what we looked like. Have y'all got any audio on Bob at this point? I'm not sure. Yes. Oh, I hear you beautifully. And, and they are saying that there's no audio. Um, that's, yeah. Any folks, can y'all hear any audio from Bob? <laughs> and Bob is talking. Nope, no audio. Okay. That's right. That's right. 
So I, I am able to hear you, which means that sound is coming into my mixer, but um, it's not going back out. And, and what I found, f folks, what I found in, in, in using this app is that this app picks up whatever the, uh, the, the, the default audio device is on my end and sends that out to Bob and then picks up whatever, I, I think, the first video device that appears on the list. And so this camera that I'm using right now is the only camera that I can use with this app. So obviously, it's very, very basic. Um, and there, there's no opportunities in this particular app for me to select the audio device and the video device. You know how you do that in Skype. But as you can see, the quality of the, the video is really excellent. Now, Bob, yeah, and Bob's, Bob's got me turned on on his phone, so he's able to watch and see at the same time. Yeah. Now, now, Bob, what's the lag between the time I say a word and the time you see it here? Are, are we pretty much real time? Okay, and Bob says that we're real time. Um, very good. So we just need to be able to figure out how to pick up the right audio device. And... Uh, That, yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's pretty typical for diecast at that point. Um, and I'm getting some suggestions in the chat room as to, to how to port your audio in, but I suspect that it's something that's going to be. I'm going to have to reboot in order to. I mean, I'm going to have to reconfigure VidBlaster in order to do that. Um, very interesting. Well, Bob, thank you so very much for taking time out and, and, and risking that. And this is Bob from Maine. Bob is planning to enter the contest. He's got his green screen set up and ready to go. Very good. Thanks, Bob. Take care. Okay. Well, that was an interesting experiment. Now, it was obvious an experiment that, that uh, was only partially successful. Uh, I thought the video looked looked pretty darn good. I was able to um, basically capture whatever I wanted to, and I imagine if I if I brought that in directly to VidBlaster and and not doing a, I mean a capture is like making a photocopy of something on a copy machine. You're not really getting it digitally. You're just sort of taking a picture of it, and and I suspect the quality would be increased significantly if you were bringing it straight in. And there are lots of questions in the chat room, excuse me, about how I was able to hear uh, Bob and, and why you weren't. Um, and it's, it's funny because every, um, every channel on my mixer that has something attached to it is, is turned up full blast. So I suspect that, uh, that I was able to monitor somehow a audio device um, through the USB connection on my mixer that was not being supplied to, um, to the output of the mixer that goes back to VidBlaster. That's a long way of saying that I don't really understand. <laughs> um, but it was a very interesting experiment and uh, I think I noticed about um, when we, I, I actually logged into that app Prior to the start of this show, it added about 5% to the CPU usage. Um, when Bob got on the call and we started doing um, video and audio, the CPU usage dropped, uh, I mean, jumped about another 10%. So it, it summed up, based on my current configuration, that we went from, from you know, 55 or 60% to 80-ish percent. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. 
It'd be nice to be able to, to, to change resolutions. It'd be nice to be able to select an audio device. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to select an aspect ratio. Um, all those things should be, or in fact, probably you know any kind of streaming kind of thing, you know, bit rate, be able to select the bit rate at which you're, you're streaming. All those kinds of things will make it uh, a great tool to be used, and if it can integrate straight into VidBlaster, I mean, wow. I mean, that will do for VidBlaster um, for the, the TV talk show market what Instant Replay has done for the sports market. I, mean, I, I think that's that big, that, that, that cute. Uh, assuming that, of course, you can get the audio to work. <laughs> um, because, you know, in this case, yeah, the audio would have to, uh, you know, either be figured out uh, how to be routed uh, to the mixer and then back into VidBlaster as, a, as one specific um, channel, the mix, or would have to be mixed internally in VidBlaster. Um, so that's it, folks. Uh, really cool, good stuff, uh, a lot of fun, WebRTC being integrated into VidBlaster as a possibility in the future. Again, today was just a screen capture, uh, so it wasn't it wasn't anything to 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 be other than just uh, kind of a a simulation. Yeah, we simulated it, uh, but it, but as a Skype replacement. Well, again, hat tip to Chuck Gooch for for sending the new uh, uh, lower thirds. Uh, apparently, I've got a bunch of them to try. I've got uh, that one with the title, the one with the email, and then as I have guests on, he sent me a couple of blanks where I can uh, include that too. So that's great. Thank you, Chuck. I really appreciate that. And remember, coming up this weekend is Dirt Track Central, dirttrackcentral.com. Coming up the last Monday of the month is going to be uh, Jean Lemay with his... Uh, uh, French music and interviews of Quebec's artists. And, and even if you're not interested in the subject matter, I think you may want to want to look not so much for the content, but for the production value. And that's going to be uh, uh, fm1017.ca. Um, and in the show, Jean says the show is called Studio 101. So when you get to uh, FM 107, oh, excuse me, FM 1017.ca, look for Studio 101 the last Monday of the month. So I think that wraps up our show today. Thanks for tuning in. If you're tuning in live, hang out for a second. Or if you want to hang out, we'll, we'll hang out and talk about the show in the chat and uh, answer whatever questions you have. And if you're watching us uh, on YouTube after the fact, thanks for tuning in. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. Um, and uh, try to catch us sometimes live. It's, it's a lot of fun, and the interaction with folks in the chat room is, is one of the things that I think makes it, makes it even more fun. So for all the folks here at That VidBlaster Guy, wait, it's just me. So thank you from me. <laughs> the one guy with one PC doing one getting there awesome broadcast. Thanks for tuning in. We will uh, we'll see you next week, next Wednesday. Uh, for another episode of that vid blaster guy. Now, if we can, uh, if we can get out of here with the right, uh, the right closing, uh, that's always a challenge. Um, you know, you got to bear with me just a second because I'm not sure that I've got that set. I thought I had it set earlier, and I think I probably unset it in. Uh, in a, in, a, in a way to get ready for today, and I just didn't set it back. So let's let's try this one. See you later.